Hello, and welcome to another edition of our ETF Insight Series, where we chat with innovative leaders from the ETF and digital assets ecosystem. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Sean O'Hara, who is president at Pacer ETFs. Um, welcome, Sean. It's great to see you. Um, so, Sean, why don't we start with you telling us about Pacer ETFs and what you do there? Sure. Great. Thanks. Thanks for having us and thanks for doing this interview. Uh, you know, Pacer ETS, we like to describe ourselves as, as innovative, disruptive, and unique. So, um, you know, we're really next door neighbors to Vanguard. And so it's pretty obvious to us that, you know, the top end of the ETF market is really, um, you know, occupied by, you know, behemoths who are very, very good at the low cost beta game, if you will, and building ETFs that sort of give exposures at the lowest possible price. And so we focus on the other end of the market, which is how do we build products and ETFs that provide solutions for clients and for financial advisors. So we spend all of our time kind of thinking about that. Uh, we've been at it for six years. It took us about two years to get to a billion dollars and we're uh, over 10 billion today. So in the last four years, we've added about 9 billion. And we, you know, we distribute our products across a whole bunch of different platforms from wirehouses to independents to RIAs. But our, our sole focus in terms of developing and building product is really two things. One is, is there a need in the market? So do financial advisors need a tool or do the end investors need a solution? And then second, is there a big enough market there in terms of potential AUM for us to actually to get involved? So you talked about, you know, some of the, you know, how you reach that success of 10 billion. So congrats on that. I know you've been quoted as saying like one of the, which I found very interesting is like one of the ways that you were able to accomplish that was through your distribution plan. And you have this wide net of RA and um, wirehouse contacts that you have, and you have a very large team of salespeople. I think you'll have to correct me here on the numbers, but I think I read that you have around 120 employees and the majority of those, I think around 90 are sales, which I think is really unique how you're structuring that. Um, so we'd love to hear a little bit more about that. Yeah, sure. So we think distribution's everything. My partner and I, Joe Thompson, our, our background is in the distribution business. We sort of honed, if you will, our, our approach to distribution over the last 30 plus years together. And when we got into the ETF business together, we, we, we just essentially have applied all that we've, you know, sort of all that information, all that tactical knowledge to the distribution uh, part of the business. So although we are an ETF issuer, which makes us a manufacturer, one of our core competencies we think is distribution. Um, and we think it's so important because the financial advisor can get some information on their own, you know, because of the invention of the internet. Um, but th oftentimes there's nuance to things or oftentimes there's different value adds that we can bring to the equation. We can share with them what other financial advisors across the country are thinking. Um, and so we've, we've built the organization as a heavily focused distribution group, uh, 60 plus wholesalers in the field. As you said, uh, 30 internals to back them up. And when we call on financial advisors, our, our sole focus is really how to help them. And then we spend a lot of time on helping them grow their business overall. So you know, we're trying to help them gain, gain more assets from existing clients or to get new clients. Bias to that side, I used to be on the sales team at another, another ETF issuer. So I completely agree with you on all those points. Um, and I know you, you know, you mentioned that your products are innovative and unique. You know, you're differentiating yourself from other ETF issuers. So I'm curious, do you have any, you know, with your lineup of products, do you have any um, outlooks about for 2022, which of those themes or products might do really well um, with the given market environment that we have? Yeah, again, it's a great question. I think I'll break it into three pieces. How's that? Let's start with fixed income. Not a lot of yield out there in this environment. Uh, our two core fixed income funds, one's a floating rate fund. So if you're worried about rising rates, that's sort of a, a nice place to be. It's all adjustable rate security. So as interest rates rise, if the Fed does in fact raise rates two or three or four or five or however many times they're going to do it this year, you'll see that yield go up. And then we have a fixed income strategy that rotates between high yield and treasuries and uses a risk measure we call a risk ratio to determine whether it's in high yield or not. And so it's a way for investors to get the competitive yields and returns that high yield give them without having to be always exposed to high yield during those periods where credit comes under pressure. So that's the fixed income side. Um, with market at markets at elevated levels, um, you know, we have a series of products uh, in the risk management category from buffered ETFs, which we run with Swan, uh, to a series we call Trend Pilot, which uses a 200-day simple moving average to move from in an equity index to into T-bills. And that gap now between the index level and the moving average 
has shrunk to the point where it's like somewhere between 1% and 4% above. And so that just means that there's not a lot of downward movement in prices before we'll start to take an action and potentially move that client to TiVo. So if the client's worried about, you know, is there going to be a correction or is there going to be a market crash? Th those strategies will do well. And then the, the biggest opportunity we think perhaps will be for equity strategies that will perform well in a rising rate, rising inflation environment. Inflation and PEs and interest rates and PEs sort of have a, um, a, a, a reaction that is opposite of each other. As interest rates rise, historically, PEs have fallen. And so with the market at this level, 25 times earnings, let's just say on the S&P 500, if we do have rising rates, you should expect that your PE is going to contract a little bit. And so we have a series of ETFs that we built that uses free cash flow and free cash flow yield to screen broad-based indexes. Um, that tend to perform better in a rising rate, rising inflation environment. And so far, if you would you know, use the first two weeks of this year as an indicator, the market's down uh, somewhere like three to four percent. And uh, cash cow uh, series, uh, large cap U.S. is up over two percent. So and that's coming off a 40 percent year last year. So if I was an equity investor and I was I was taking the Fed at their word and I was a little bit more concerned about inflation on the equity side, I'd be looking at U.S. cash cows. Yeah, very interesting, Sean. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your insights. Um, thank you for joining the interview. And for anyone that's watching the video and you'd like to learn more um, or see, watch more of these videos, please go to our website, which is blackwatersearch.com. Thank you for watching.